Sage Intact has got an open API, so any of the developers can just use the website and just get the calls for the different areas of the system. It's really sort of user friendly. I've got a sort of screenshot of it there and we'll pop into it in a minute. Um, anything that you can do manually and intact, you're going to be able to do by an API. So if there's any job that's really causing you a lot of bother, it's really a pain to do, you're going to be able to do it using the API if you want. So you can use a mix of kind of like generic or legacy functions in your client application. So it's entirely up to you. You don't have, you can choose sort of one or the other or a mix of both. PKF do have developers available for this as well. So we've got like on-site developers that can help you build out an API or you can use your own. So it's entirely up to you. And a lot of people will use this option if they have got a, like I say, a bespoke integration that they're using that we need to sort of tailor and you can't use one of those kind of out of the box use or marketplace partners you want a, a sort of specific one to you you've got really specific needs so you need one built around you rather than you kind of build one around them so yeah so the api uses um, a site called postman or it can also use sdk options so there's three options that are available for the sdk um, i'm not going to pretend to be a developer at this stage but there are the three different options that it will use so the developer will need to know that information when they can kind of decide what path they want to go down what you'll see here is you'll see obviously it's an about page you can learn all about the api and how it works but you can also go on and go on to the different so all the different areas so it's in sections so all the company information that we normally do on a build so that's normally done already for you you've got the general ledger so if you want something popping in for journals for example cash management ap ar expenses if you've got time and expenses purchase or inventory inventory if you've got that project so it's not just the basics you know all your additional modules are on there as well you can see it goes right down and again i'm going to pick on ap because that has been my sort of chosen go-to throughout the the webinar today so again we're going to pull in and see if we can get some some recurring bills you can have or you can have just in, just bills which is invoices is a little bit americanized but yeah so you can say you want to you know have the option to create bills or you want to have the option to update bills again you've got legacy and you've got the generic like we've said and delete bills so you can have all these different options you can have a combination so if i wanted to use a create option i click the create link and your developer will literally be able to see how they would build that call. The call is right there. So you'd obviously add your own parameters, things like your dates and things like that, your vendor IDs, they're not there. They're gonna have to be pulled off from your system when they're built, but they, they can see how it's gonna work. This is completely open to anyone. Anyone can access this at any point. They can have a look at how much of a nightmare, basically, if it's gonna build, if it's gonna be super easy it's super easy we've had um really good feedback we've been able to do calls ourselves as consultants to help us with a build and things like that so you'll be able to to just have a look at the system and see what what exactly is involved as i said we have got developers on site so we can do a combat combined approach with your developers take a look at it and we can support and help you you've also got sage developers as well that are happy happy to help but this is the website and the open api for you guys to have a look at again you can see all the different fields that are in intact description and obviously telling you again if they're optional what they're for um so your developers should be able to build build from there okay last thing i'll just sort of clear up is how the system works so the api functions can be divided into two categories so the generic functions that can operate multiple types of objects so for example the create function can be used to add a new account in the general ledger a new vendor and accounts payable a new bill and accounts receivable or many other objects so the generic functions they want is to read, you know, read the data, update the data, delete the data, look up the data, query the data. So they're kind of like generic, obviously things that you'd want the system to do. And then you can have the object specific functions. So these ones can only operate on a single type of object. So for example, the create customer function can only be used to create a customer in accounts receivable. So these functions are labeled as legacy. So you did see that in the screenshot there that I was just went through on the API. You've got create bill and create bill legacy so that's what we what you've seen there so these functions are labeled as legacy in the documentation which means that they are typically not enhanced in new releases so there are no plans to deprecate legacy functions in fact the 
there are cases in which they're the only functions available to accomplish the specific tax. So if you see a legacy function, um, that's just, you know, the old way of doing it and then there's a new way of doing it. It's not going to update the legacy function, but it's also not going to get rid of the legacy function either. So you don't have to kind of worry about that either. It's not going to be a case of you have to amend your API because it's agent tax has done some sort of release that's messed your API up or anything like that. 